Welcome to Tom Strong Reviews. Here we have the Hexbug Nano Space range of sets. In this video, I'm going to review the Nano Space Cosmic Command Habitat set, which is the box set in the middle. Everything on the table is included in the set, that's 92 pieces in total, and that includes these two Hexbug Nano V1s, I'm going to call them my Space Rangers. They both have LR44 batteries included, so they're ready to go. This build is the same setup as is on the front of the box, and I don't think it's actually that clever, because you've got the doors a little bit close to the central command centre, it's a little bit hard to get access to the door header clips to open and close them, and also, the nano truck and the great space truck, when it comes trundling forward, it's going to hit any poor old nano in this gravity zero gravity trainer. And that can't be great when you're trying to learn. So I'm going to focus on this review, especially on the nano spaceship on the far right there and the special platform and arrangement to get in and out of the ship. Let's do a rebuild and get on with the review. Here's my build. I'm going to show you and talk about the various details as we go, but let's get the Space Nano Rangers in their environment. Now, I've set up the doors in such a way. Thank you. This guy's going to almost demonstrate so already. No, thank you. Turned around. Let's get him out of the way. Such that the trucks can have a good isolation aspect. So I can shut the inner airlock door, for example. And in doing so, I can then control one by one the nanos getting to and from the actual space trucks. Now I've got the same setup at the back far right. I'll spin the set around as we go. Now I've left the lift in the up position deliberately and I've also built this stump area, I'll go through that close up later again, where you can actually use an end piece on the end of any piece of track and it works particularly well on the angle sections such that they've got a little viewing platform to come out and have a little look at the spaceship. Right, I actually want a nano, thank you, to come in the truck. No, <laughs> this guy decided he wants to back in. Turns around and this time he's in the truck. Now he's obviously in the fuel truck. And guess where he's going? I've lined it up so he's going to head towards the spaceship so we can do a fueling exercise, he can do an inspection. Now, again, it's a play element, so here I'm talking about we've now fueled the ship. It's going to turn around. These guys need a little bit of help. They mostly drive in straight lines. Not quite the case when they're in the nano space suits. I'll show you the, the, the big EVA suit there. They need a little bit of help getting back into the base. I'm going to do the airlock properly once, there we go, and he's back in again. Now I'm going to say they can remote control these trucks and he's reversed back up again. Brilliant. I'm going to quickly pop this grey Space Nano in his EVA mini spacesuit. Now they don't drive as well in this. Make sure it's all popped in properly. Now they can go all over the place as you can see, hovering around, but because it's quite heavy, they need a little bit of help in these. They also do work inside the sets, but they're more likely to get stuck on things and need a little bit of help. He's playing around the zero G area now, but he's not doing too bad. One of the other nanos is bound to give him a push. He's rattling away. There we go, the white nano just gave him the nudge he needed and he's off and about. So this and the spacesuits are great as an idea. Now turning them off, pull them out always by the tail, in by the heads. I show this in a great more de deal of detail in the Discovery Station review video.
but I'm going to now drop the lift and I'm going to watch for the first nano to come into the actual lift section. Now of course I'm, I'm asking to go in the left, no one's going to, although I've got a nice zip line space nano here, checking the ship, having a good look around and I'm hoping to get one willing pilot. I'm going to lift him up in the lift, we'll do this close up. As you can see he's now up on the right platform, now I'm going to just hurry him along because I want to grab him and of course I want to put him in the spaceship and then he can fly away. Now also when he comes back of course down on the lift and he can join his buddies down on the deck. Now you want to make sure when you drop the lift there's no Hexbug Nanos in the base and if you're lucky like I was no nan Nanos will be harmed in the making of this video. A great deal of this set focuses on the spaceship and the lift arrangement and this piece here to get them in and out of the ship. So I've got myself a willing Hexbug Nano space astronaut, so I'm going to pop in the lift. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to actually put him in, save time. Now I've reviewed the lift in detail and the zip line set, so you can see all the details of the lower side of the lift. I'm going to raise the lift and click it in the up position. And now the Nano's come out, okay he's fallen over but he's self-righted, and he's looking for a ship. Now as you saw he turned around and he headed towards the lift and I'm blocking him, and if I don't block him, he'll go in the lift, and he's now going to stay on the lift because he can't turn around the lift and that's one of the features of the lift which works great in the zip line set because the zip line set when the nano goes up he goes off down a wire rope and he skadoodles down to another part of the set in this situation you've got to catch him so you've got to say okay he's now willing I'm going to turn his battery off, so you're catching him at this point here. You're now going to open the hatch and there's a little flap part here, so you can get your nail in. And inside here, you position the Nano, so it's kind of upright, it's a little bit like the way you can imagine some of the older fashioned spaceships being. I'm just going to do a close up zoom, putting the Nano Space Astronaut into the spaceship, so there's a little flap point on the front, you can just about get your nail underneath there, and that lifts up the front cover, only goes up about halfway, so don't force that. Getting the nano in, you've got to kind of put the back in first, you've really, really got to look out for the legs, because if the legs bent up backwards, and it really is not easy, you really have to shuffle him in to get all the legs in, and then almost ease him forward to get the neck grip. Now I don't push this down too far because I find that the canopy itself holds them in place anyway so it's not going to go anywhere. So there's my nano inside the spaceship and it's not easy getting them out. So as you saw I've only put him in let's say halfway, I've not pushed them all the way down. Same again, canopy up and you've got to get the smalls of your fingers or whatever fits under his head so I can just about get my little finger under the front of here and lift him out. Now you've got to be very careful because otherwise you're going to damage or you risk damaging the legs or the neck. So you can already see I've got a slight nick on the very right hand side. Let's twist it so it's right inside of the camera. The very right hand side, I've already got a slight nick where because I've pushed him all the way in, I struggled getting him out. So you really do have to be careful. That's the only negative about these nano space ships and space suits is they really do grip quite snug and tight behind the nano's heads. And uh, you've got to be careful of that. Be mindful of that. Now as I've got the ship nice and close, you can see it's really well detailed. The engines, you can have it on different aspects, of course, you know it stands up. Now all these things are changeable, so I've currently got it mounted with a flat gun mount because it means it fits and sits quite neatly on the table and I've currently got a radar dish, a different radar dish that's included in the set. And I've exchanged the radar set into the truck because everything's interchangeable. But of course you can use the original ones that come with the ship if you prefer. They're a deeper, darker grey and they're the only ones of that colour rather than the orange and blue. So you could actually have the gun back on the top. Okay, so the spaceship has now landed and I've already got the nano buzzing. He's rearing to go. I'm going to sort of tip him out. There he goes. Okay, he's on his side. He's upside down. He'll self right. Now this is what happen, happens to astronauts, they go into zero G, it takes a little while for them to find their legs. So he's now up and raring to go. He's in the left and I can now lower him gently down. So here we have another Hexbug Nano, just a regular V1. They also all fit within the actual spaceships. Now you saw there the problem, you've got to catch him. So if you want a Nano to go into the rocket and he comes out, unless he's just doing an inspection, let's pretend the white one was doing just an inspection. I'm gonna grab the brown one now. But if you don't grab them, 
He jumped around in the lift. That doesn't happen. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab the white guy again. Here comes the white guy. So up he comes, and if I don't stop him, if he turns around and heads towards the lift, he'll go down. And that's the thing, because the lift, there's no turnaround option at the upper part of the lift. So it's up to you whether you want to have and build this configuration the same way. Now let's say he was doing inspection, absolutely fine, no problem at all with that. No problems doing inspections. But the other tip is, when they do come out of here, make sure the lift is in that position, because they go down, he's now stuck in there, and I'm gonna have to reassemble this unit to get it out. It's very difficult, even if I lift this, it's very difficult for me to get him out of a halfway up and halfway down lift. So if you know who goes on the top of the lift, can I actually do it on camera? You never know. Not easy at all, as you can see. So be careful. I've separated off the central command structure just to show you how the default instructions suggest you build it, as well as to give it a quick spin so you can see all the really amazing detail that this has. So there's all kinds of textures and different symbols all around. Definitely the headquarters where the chief hex bug commander would reside. So this is the default build with one side and one central tower, but you might want to use the tower in another purpose. And I'm gonna quickly rebuild it. And what's probably my favorite because it's economical with the walls is the two-sided version. So I've got the walls opposite each other in this setup. Of course, you can actually have it angled. You could have the two staggered. As long as it's stable and sturdy, I think that's the ticket. And of course you want to have enough entrances and exits. <laughs> this nano is getting dizzy as well as access because if nanos do fall over you want to interact like that couldn't have happened better on cue this guy is now falling for the camera then you still need to have a decent amount of room to get your hands in and out and i think the two walls on the side give good access to the front and rear and here it is with three walls so i've spaced them out in the normal way you've still got three entrances or exits to have a look at it so you can have this as a spur end to a, a space set, or of course in the very, very middle, where of course you could have track cam of all the three available entrances and exits. And of course the main advantage again is you free up the tower, and the tower of course you can then use in multiple ways. I wanted to make special mention of this piece here because I'm a little bit disappointed. It's, it's an opportunity missed. It has a fork where it goes right and left, but the end pieces are already moulded and blocked off. Unlike here, where I can actually add or remove with the male-female clip and end piece, one of the doors from the hex cells, and I can make a turnaround point, rather than let me do that and choose what I'm doing, they've moulded it and I can't do anything with it. So that to me is a, is, a, is a missed opportunity. On the right here, we have Hexbug V1 Y splitter from the Raceway track set. And I've also got a loop around set, which is also in the zip line set, as well as the raceway track set. Now I think they've improved the loop around. This smaller hex cell with the plate pieces and the, and the dots and the shape works really well. I think that's a fantastic dead end piece, loop around piece, similar to that. However, they've lessened the, the split Y piece. When I saw this, until I got it, I thought, brilliant. These will be removes, removable ends and I'll be able to decide whether I want to have a lug on the end or not. Unfortunately, someone's molded it with that in place all the time. So I've got no choice. I can't extend and add on and make a split. It's as it is. And I really hope that somebody from Hexbug Nano sees this video and uh, modifies this and says, yeah, why not let them have a decision as to whether they want to use it as a forking piece or not and uh, add it the same as all of the tracks with the male-female junction is all I'm asking for. Two more caps and I'll be a very, very happy Hexbug Nano fan. I've made a mini moon base, just so we can zoom in and look at some of the details, just to show you how effective these kind of windows are, and the amount of detail in the actual units themselves. So these raised textures, it's not just print. There's actual raised, really touchy-feely, feels lovely. And you can see the guys going through in the windows, in the corridor especially. I'm actually going to spin this round so we can really get a good look. But the first one to zoom in, get this lovely blue and orange consistency throughout. There they both go. That's what I wanted to catch. Thank you, guys. I'm now going to spin this set around. Hopefully I don't knock them all over. Because there's even more detail when, you, when looking close up. 
and again same on the corridor set so I've got good lighting nice and low so I can zoom in again and again hidden in amongst the corridor there's dials and screens as well as the window and you've got texture again on the inside where you've got little indentations where the window is so amazing detail just look at the towers the towers there's kind of a ribbed texture on the outside it's really amazing dimples down below now I don't know what they do but um, boy does it look really really quality as a product there's a great deal of versatility within the Ernest space range with common sized lugs and pieces you can even do quite weird things like put the ion cannon on top of your spaceship so that is now a far more formidable weapon I've popped the spaceship's radar dish on the top of a tower why not because I want this to be my science lab this lab you can build in many ways and if you have different multiple sets you can even make it taller because you can stack the walls on top of each other you can or can't have then topped by either the hinge angleable shield wall or this top lid you don't have to as the set explains build it with a tower piece in the middle it doesn't need the central support if you have at least two walls this Y split piece is very good on the ground. It doesn't actually need to be on its plinth and I quite like it on the ground. I think I prefer it because you know pieces go back. So this might actually be a better place for the garage pieces for your trucks. This might be easier on the floor to actually handle truck mounts going in and out, loading the backs, checking, doing maintenance on them. It really is up to you. Then our spacesuits work well inside the set. You've got to be a little bit careful how much stuff you've got inside and how, how the big ones are used because they're a little bit harder to turn around. I'm not sure he's going to get out of there on his own, but he's going to have fun buzzing around and I might, might give him a nudge. There's nothing wrong with interactive play. These things move on their own, but they're also more fun with you if you can actually play with them. Okay, he's been pushed out. He's a little bit top heavy, <laughs> but at least when he's pushed out, he's absolutely fine. He's not going to have a problem. Much harder than to self right when there are spacesuits, so I'm going to give him a helping hand. And I'm actually going to turn the big heavy guy, the little shuttle guy, off just for now. The stand that you have here, that you've seen set up underneath the Y split piece, will also work on any straight piece of track. So I can just simply lock it in place. And that will still work even with a door. So I can slot a door on, no problem at all. So I can have a raised airlock system if I wanted to. Now I've only got one leg but the towers upside down there's a nice central ridge here the hamster is split in the middle there fits rather well and it's the right size and level and i don't think it looks too bad it's quite futuristic yeah there's a hollow section but i don't think that looks too bad at all and if i just pick up my nano i can just demonstrate that that works absolutely well okay it's an airlock to nowhere there's a reason why it's shut buddy there he goes and as you can see I've implemented a single end piece on the single straight piece there to create an end and these are really quite good it means what used to be door pieces and the hex cells are actually now able to turn any piece into a dead end and as you can see because of the flange size that the track have now they can turn around even when faced with a closed door as well as a flange piece which I think is a really great part of the nano space range it's really something quite unique that we didn't have before so all in all quite a lot of build options it really is for your imagination and when you've got a few extra sets all these pieces and parts all come into play in different ways it's the same interlock system so they've all got a male female piece or a hermaphrodite connection so even this two pieces of track here with their ends I've now got a, a small mini base or perhaps a carport or maybe this is the garage again trucks pulling up to could be a truck stop and uh, who knows it's it's really is great for play and great for imagination and play ideas and yeah the ability to actually use your old hex bug nano v1s i think is absolute benefit they overtake each other so even though i've got two in there one might get pushed out they're a bit bit frenzied sometimes but they can overtake each other as you saw there no issue at all and because they can turn around they don't get stuck so on the older nano track you'd actually have a bit of a negative where yeah they'd overtake but they wouldn't do that as smoothly as they do in the new hexbug nano track which i think is a real benefit thank you for watching i hope you found this video useful and helps with your purchasing decisions please feel free to like subscribe and comment i try to answer as many questions left on my videos as possible
In reviewing this Cosmic Command Habitat set, I'm also going to assess the value for money and what would I do next with my money. So if I've already got a zip line set and I've already got a discovery station set, what do I want more of? So in doing that, to just consider the special pieces in the Cosmic Command set, I'm going to just quickly highlight them. So those five pieces you can only get in the Cosmic Command set. And this at retail was released at 50 US dollars, 50 pounds, 50 euros in 2017. The zip line set was 20, 20, 20, and the discovery station 30, 30, 30. So I've got all these things, and what do I want more of? What would I then recommend buying next? Well, for me, standout set is the Discovery Station, because in Discovery Station, you'd get two more nanos, I get two more airlocks, two more hex cells, another entrance and exit, another fantastic truck, you know how much I love these trucks, and you get three more of these wall pieces with angleable shields, and I think access is key. I like to be able to shut them up, and I like to be able to open them up, and, you know, okay, if I'm gonna have my rocket take off, why not have it inside a hex cell? Why not have it land somewhere other than on this platform? I think these guys can get in and out multiple ways. They don't have to have a platform to do that. Yes, you get another iron cannon, and of course, one of my favorite pieces, the satellite dish, as well as a tower to go with it. So for me, value for money, and what I want more of, the discovery station, is, is the bit I want next. Because another Cosmic Command set, although it's really good value for money in that you get 92 pieces compared to 55 and the zip line set only 26. I don't know if I need another lift because I've got the two because I've got the zip line set and I want to have more nanos and I love the trucks and do I want to spend my money on things like another spaceship and this piece, this piece, the blue top. There's too many things here in the Cosmic Command set that I don't think really extend the range massively. It's great to have one of each but I don't think I need two. So for me Another discovery station is my tip if you're expanding your range. Please feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section below.